Hey friends, it's Just The Gems, I'm Brandon. For a lot of us, it's nearly the holiday season, and that means peace on earth and goodwill and stuff. Except, I guess not really, because the world is kind of a dumpster fire. Uh, but one thing remains constant in this capitalist hellscape we live in, and that's gift giving. Gift giving makes the world go round. So let's get ready to celebrate the end of the year, or like, whatever religious or cultural thing you want to celebrate, I'm not your dad, by taking a look at some must-buy gifts for the JRPG lover in your life. And hey, if you are that JRPG lover, then I just wrote your Christmas list for you. You're welcome. Also, stick around for a collector's edition giveaway near the end of this video. You are not going to want to miss that. Before I hand over the goods, though, would you consider subscribing to the channel? Just a hint, it's going to be a prerequisite for the giveaway. I cover JRPGs in general with lots of reviews and lists and other fun stuff like that. All I want for Christmas is for you to subscribe. Also, video games would be good. A bunch of subscriptions and video games. Perfect Christmas. Oh, and if you could like the video and leave a comment below to help with the algorithm, that would be so awesome. You all are the best. Okay, how should we do this? Let's start with books. Yes, I do also read things that aren't projected from a screen. First up, is this bad boy. Bitmap Books has put out what must be the definitive guide to Japanese role-playing games, though it's humbly titled A Guide to Japanese Role-Playing Games. If your JRPG-loving loved one is interested in the history of the genre, or just curious about some of the games we missed out on in the West, then this is an absolute must have. We're talking more than 600 full color pages, all bound in just one of the most impressive hardcover books I've ever owned. It covers pretty much the entire history of Japanese RPGs from the earliest PC days to the modern era. And on top of that, it devotes a lot of pages to covering the games from some huge JRPG pioneers like Falcom and Atlas. It's frankly astonishing how cool this freaking thing is. If you have a coffee table and you don't already own this book, I mean, what do you even have a coffee table for? Coffee? Come on, you gotta grab this one and it's only $45. I'm personally confused about how this could even be so inexpensive given the quality and everything it contains. Look, I wouldn't sleep on this. You're gonna wanna get your order in ASAP. Next up, let's look at a recent release from Dragonwell Publishing and that is Lacrimosa of Donna. Now the eagle-eyed viewer might already have realized that yes, this is in fact a novelization of East 8. And it's in English. Like natively, it was written in English. Isn't that insane? We are finally living in a day and age when JRPGs are being adapted into novels for the West. Is that crazy to you? It's crazy to me. Anyway, not only do we have an English written novelization of East 8, which in my opinion has the best story out of the entire East series, but it's an actually good novelization. Back in the day, if we got anything in print related to games or anime we loved, there was a pretty good chance that the quality was lacking. But the writing on display here is excellent, and the author, her name's Anna Kashina, by the way, she does such a fantastic job of breathing new life into this story. A big part of that is just the fact that, by necessity, Adol is a real character here, not just like a voiceless vessel for the player and her characterization feels spot on for what Adol is supposed to be. I really hope this performs well so that we can potentially get more East novels, either more adaptations or even original stories. One way you can help make that happen is to buy this for your Falcom-loving East playing friend or family member or yourself. And finally, on the book front, and this one kind of took me by surprise, but we've got Final Fantasy VII, Traces of Two Pasts. Now, if you're anything like me, meaning you're a jaded and sarcastic butthead, you might be thinking, Traces of Two Pasts? That's a pretty dumb sounding name. And look, I agree with you. I feel like we could come up with a much, much better title for this book. In fact, why don't we? Down in the comments, tell me what you would name this book after I've told you a bit about what it is. And honestly, if you've already read it, then even better. But anyway, Traces of Two Past gives us in-depth backstory on Tifa and Aerith, all from within this new Final Fantasy VII Remake universe. It's written by Kazushige Nojima, who's been involved in the Final Fantasy world for a long time. Uh, he wrote Advent Children and the older Final Fantasy VII novel, On the Way to a Smile, which I would describe as an epilogue to Final Fantasy VII in which all of the characters you love are suffering from clinical depression. But don't let that stop you from reading this one, as regardless of how you might feel about his previous work, the stories here are deep 
and complex and heartfelt and honestly just super enjoyable to read. Particularly Aerith's story, even though we get a small glimpse of her backstory in the game, there's so much more to it. And watching her relationship with Elmira grow is incredibly moving. Seriously, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is coming out soon. So there's basically no better way to get hyped than by fully diving into the Final Fantasy VII universe. And this is one of the best ways to do that. All right, that's it for books. Am I missing any? Let me know down in the comments so I can add them to my reading list. Moving on, let's talk accessories. I really only have one, and oh boy, I can feel some of you getting ready to rake me over the coals for this but I stand by it. I'm talking about the PlayStation Portal. Yes, the DualSense controller sliced in half and stuck on either side of an iPad. This is one of the weirdest looking things I've ever owned, and I own the Wiglet plush. I was very on the fence when this little guy was announced. After all, like the PSP and Vita lover in me was kind of bummed that we weren't getting a new legitimate PlayStation handheld. A remote play device? Come on, why would I buy that when I have a perfectly good phone? Well, see, that's the thing. For some reason, and I don't understand my own psychology well enough to say for sure, maybe you can analyze me in the comments, but the very idea of playing video games on my phone makes me actively angry. Like, I feel mad thinking about it. It's strange, but it just feels wrong somehow. But there are definitely times where I knew I'd want to play a game on my PS5 and not have to be stuck in this cold basement. Like, during the winter, for example. It gets frigid down here. But that's where all my games are. With the PlayStation Portal, I can live like a real boy and be nice and warm upstairs. I can also spend more quality time with my wife. Look at us. So connected. So, who is this thing for? If you or your loved one have a strong Wi-Fi connection and any sort of desire to play JRPGs in bed, on the toilet, or any place that isn't right in front of the TV, then this thing is great. It's got a huge 8-inch screen, and the controller is literally just a dual sense, so it has all the same haptics and feel. It also just feels really premium. It's not perfect, like, why a device like this would lack Bluetooth in this day and age is beyond me, though at least you can use wired headphones. But as a remote player, it's about as good as they come. Grinding in Persona 5 Royal, or really any turn-based RPG, is super easy with this thing, particularly since even if you don't have the best Wi-Fi connection, at the very least, the minor instances of lag won't ruin your experience. It's not going to be for everyone, but if it's for you, I think you're really going to like it. Okay, next up, some real portable consoles. So if you're up in arms that I brought up the PlayStation Portal, put down your pitchforks. I'm talking about the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck. I'll start with the Switch. When it was first announced, it was an intriguing concept. A home console that you could take with you wherever you went, every beloved Nintendo IP, detachable controllers that could be used in all sorts of ways. Dang it. It was an appealing value proposition. I wasn't super sold on it in the earliest days. I bought it day one, but it was basically a Breath of the Wild machine for the first six months or so. But pretty soon, for whatever reason, the Switch started to become the JRPG machine. The PlayStation had ruled the genre for the past three or so generations, but Nintendo was coming back strong. There are so many JRPGs on the Switch. I did a Nintendo Switch JRPG tier list video recently, and that was just covering the couple dozen that I happened to own. There are so many more. If the JRPG lover in your life doesn't own a Switch, you need to ask them, why? What's wrong with you? And then you can make their pain go away by gifting them a Switch Lite for $200. Or if you're a really good friend, you can get them the Switch OLED with a freaking incredible screen for $300. But the Switch isn't the only game in town when it comes to JRPGs. It's got some pretty decent competition in the form of the Steam Deck. This baby is essentially a gaming PC that you can fit in your back pocket if you wear MC Hammer pants at least. Can't touch this. So that, that's okay, Mr. Hammer, I, I didn't want to. The Steam Deck plays basically every video game you can get on Steam, which you might realize is pretty much all of the video games. Now, to be fair, not every game is considered Steam Deck compatible, but there are often relatively easy ways around that. Keep in mind though, that to get the most out of a Steam Deck in that respect, you need to at least have a basic knowledge of computers. But 
Even if you stick to fully Steam Deck compatible games, you still have an enormous selection to choose from. You've got classics like the Final Fantasy Pixel Remasters and fully modern games like Final Fantasy VII Remake, and even other games that aren't Final Fantasy. And if you wanted to branch out and play a, you know, a Western RPG, you could try Baldur's Gate 3. I won't tell anyone. It's a super versatile machine and there's a brand new OLED model coming out. If you want to save a few bucks though, you can grab the original model with its lesser screen for a pretty good discount. The high-end Steam Deck OLED will cost you though, $650. That is not cheap. It is, however, compared to a full-blown PC, so if you keep everything in perspective, it's still pretty great. Okay, we've covered books, we've covered accessories, we've covered consoles, what's left? Oh, that's right, games. What's the point of a PS Portal or a Switch or a Steam Deck if you don't have any games, right? There isn't one. So let me recommend some games to you. If you or your loved ones are into JRPGs, then these are the games from 2023 that you'll want to grab to put under the tree. On the Switch, you need to check out Super Mario RPG. This is a remake of the classic Super NES game, and it's sort of setting the new gold standard for how remakes are done. This is one of the most faithful recreations of a game ever, and the revamped graphics and music have taken a masterpiece and somehow made it even better. Uh, speaking of remakes, Star Ocean The Second Story R, the R, stands for Remake, is available on basically every platform. This is seemingly the next evolution of Square Enix's HD 2D graphical style, and it is gorgeous. And not to mention that Star Ocean The Second Story is pretty widely considered the best entry in the series. So if you have even a passing interest in sci-fi JRPGs, you need to get this one. Back on the Switch, the latest Fire Emblem entry, Fire Emblem Engage, was one of the highlights of the start of 2023 for me. A bunch of interesting characters, a fun story, and super smooth Fire Emblem strategy combat make for pretty much an essential Switch title. So if you haven't already, get on it. For the PlayStation 5, Gotta give that little slugger a bit more attention. The Switch is hogging the limelight. But on PS5, we have Final Fantasy 16. Controversies around what constitutes a JRPG aside, this is a masterwork of a game and it is begging to be played. It's dark and deep and moving and melancholic. It's beautiful. Fans of the classics that prefer old style games with modern conveniences will want to have Octopath Traveler 2 in their collections. This is sort of like a set of JRPG short stories that all sort of connect together with eight different protagonists and more of that gorgeous HD 2D art that Square Enix is so good at. And finally, because I'm a giant Trails series fanboy, I need to recommend the Trails games that came out this year. I'm talking Trails from Zero. Okay, technically, I think that came out late last year. Anyway, Trails from Zero, Trails to Azure, and Trails into Reverie. The games in this series make up one of the most epic and memorable JRPG stories ever told. And if you're a fan of the genre, but haven't played them, you need to get on it. And finally, The Legend of Nayuta Boundless Trails. This is a Trails series spinoff that puts turn-based battles aside for more of an East-like action combat system. It's been pretty highly regarded, and I, of course, bought the Collector's Edition and Wait, why do I have two of them? Even I'm not so crazy that I need to have two copies. Huh, well, I guess I just have to give one of these away, don't I? This is the Switch version, by the way. Now, this isn't sponsored by the publisher or anything like that. My dumb butt just literally accidentally ordered two. So my stupid mistake can be your reward. Here's how we'll do it. First of all, be sure you're subscribed to Just The Gems publicly. If you need to learn how to make your YouTube subscriptions public, Give it a Google, it's not too hard. Next, leave me a comment telling me which Trails game is your favorite. If you've never played a Trails game, then let me know what your favorite JRPG is, how's that? I'll choose the winner from the comments on December 10th. If I'm not able to get in touch with the winner within 24 hours, I'll choose again until we find someone. Cool? Cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like if you did, and if you didn't, Crush that dislike button like it insulted your mother. Once again, thank you so much for watching. You've made this past year of video making pretty great. Until next time.